Good morning, Willowbrook. Today, we're going to continue our deep dive into the book of John. And we're going to be looking intently at verses 6 through 8. You know, years ago, while I was pastoring a church in Texas, I was called to be a witness in a trial. As I sat in the witness chair, the jury, they just wanted to know what I saw, what I heard, what I knew to be truth. They just wanted me to tell the facts. And that was easy because I wasn't having to give my opinion on something or something I thought might happen or I heard secondhand. I only had to speak the truth as to what I had witnessed. You know, in verse 7, we are introduced in the book of John, chapter 1, to our witness, John the Baptist. Now, he was the messenger sent from God. Now, we know that John was both a priest and a Nazarite. In the Bible, if you look, there are only three men who are mentioned who were Nazarites their entire life. One was Samuel, one was Samson, and one was John the Baptist. And they were only Nazarites, you know, only three of them, because it was a very hard lifestyle to live. A Nazarite couldn't touch a dead body. They couldn't drink wine, and they couldn't cut their hair. That didn't matter if that body was a dear family member. They couldn't t touch it because they were to prove that all of their love and all of their affection went to God, that their love just was over and eclipsed all of their all of their, uh, other love in the world. They never could drink wine because that would show the world that they only had an appetite for God and the things of God. And the long hair was to show the world that even when it came to an outward appearance where in our generation, how we look is so important. How we dress is so important. The things that we have and the material possessions that we have are so important when really God only looks at the heart. And so a Nazarite didn't cut their hair to show that their outward appearance didn't matter. All that mattered was God. Now, that's a very high standard to live by. It was a higher standard uh, to live by than anyone else in, in, that I know of in, in the Hebrew priesthood lived by. And, and I think that's why, if you look at over 1,500 years of Hebrew history, the Bible only lists three who lived up to that standard. You know, Samson, he was one, but Samson failed because he had his Delilah. And Samuel and John, both of those were prophets. Samuel was the first, and John was the last. But John the Baptist was also a priest. You see, a prophet represents God to man, okay? God to us. But a priest represents man to God. And John was more than just a normal priest because he was a Nazarite priest. Uh, you know, a priest in, in his day suggested uh, that they had a professional sacri uh, sacred living, that there was a professional uh, consecration. But a Nazarite priest, their lifestyle alone set them apart because you could tell it was a personal dedication to God, a personal dedication to serve God. You know, John the Baptist, he lived a life so true in his calling and in his conviction that he earned these words of praise for the Lord, that there is no one better born among women than John the Baptist. He was sent from God to the nation of Israel to shine light on the coming of Jesus. Up until this point, there had been 400 years, really, of silence from God. And John the Baptist... He was like a spotlight of truth and shined his light on not only the, the repentance that was needed in his world, but also he showed by the authority of a life truly lived for God that he was shining his light on the one true light of the world from God found in Jesus. You know, John had a reason for what he did. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. As I found out in the courtroom, a witness is not the same as, as an attorney. attorney uh, an attorney argues his case. They try to prove a point. They want to influence people to get to a certain decision or a desired decision where a witness is simply supposed to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help them God. They get on the stand and they testify to this is what I know as a fact. Not a speculation, not an opinion, but the absolute truth. Now, John the Baptist knew the reality of Jesus. 
He knew that he was the Messiah, the son of the living God and the true light of the world. And he testified to that fact. John knew that, that he personally was not the light of the world, but that he had been sent simply to bear witness to the light, to lead others to the light. It's important that they be led to the Lamb of God who could take away the sins of the world. Now, none of us are called to save anyone. We're just been simply called to bear witness to the Savior. In a world that desperately needs hope, in a world that is desperately looking for truth, we carry inside our hearts and lives the hope and the truth and the abundant life that everyone needs. We are called to be the John the Baptists of our generation. We're not to draw attention to ourselves. We're not to seek fame and fortune or glory for ourselves. We're not to try to build our own kingdoms. We're simply here to make sure that all of our neighbors, all, all of our classmates, all of our business associates, and every stranger that we meet, no matter the color of their skin, their economic status, or the country in which they live, that all of them have a chance to know Jesus is the light of the world. You know, the moon is not the light. The moon just reflects the light of the sun. The moon may shine by night, but the day is coming and the sun will shine its warmth on all of us. John the Baptist was not the light, but he faithfully pointed the way to the one who truly is life and is alive today. Rejoice today in knowing that you have the light of the world living inside of you. Rejoice that someone, someone in your life was faithful, just like John the Baptist, to share the light of the world with you. Who was that? And if you know, remember who it was, or even if you don't and you know you have Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to tell you to be like John the Baptist. Now go and do likewise and share that with someone else. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day.